All right, in this video, we're going to see how to do a hypothesis test for the difference of two population proportions. And this example has a very generic um, story where we have population one and population two, or the first population and the second population. Um, so the little subscript one will denote stuff from the first population, and the little subscript 2 will denote information from the second population. Uh, the claim is that the population proportion 1 is different than population proportion 2. The alternative would be that they are equal. And we have a level of significance of 10%. Uh, we get some sample data from each population and we will be using the normal distribution to model this. So we're going to rewrite the hypotheses as the difference between the proportions. By subtracting P2 from both sides on these, you can get the hypotheses I have here in Excel. P1 minus P2 is equal to 0. P1 minus two P2 is not equal to 0. Um, of course, because of that not equal to sign, this is a two-tailed test. And we're using the normal distribution because we have a very large sample. And uh, it's a good approximation for the binomial distribution. The level of significance is 0 0.1. And we're now ready to put in our sample data. So in sample 1, we have a sample size of 528 and 218 successes, giving us a sample proportion of 0 0.41288. Uh, with sample 2, we have a sample size of 375 and 182 successes, giving us a sample proportion of 0 0.48533. So you can get a point estimate just by subtracting those sample proportions. And that's really what we're going to be comparing with the sampling distribution. That's our individual there. Uh, to see how far that is from 0, right? So again, if that's really close enough to 0, then it would support the, uh, the null. If that's far from zero, it would support the alternative. All right, then we get into something called the pool proportion. Um, if you go to the OpenStax book, chapter 10, uh, so elementary statistics for OpenStax, um, chapter 10, section 3, about 580, you get these formulas for the pool proportion, right, where you're basically adding the successes and adding the sample sizes and then dividing. Um, and so that's what we have here in Excel. Just add those successes in the numerator, add those sample sizes in the denominator. And then you get the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So this is the distribution here, and the mean is 0. And the standard deviation is this. Notice it references P sub C, that pool proportion we just calculated. And it also has those sample sizes. So here's that formula in Excel using the pooled proportion and the sample sizes that I already have stored in the spreadsheet. All right, and then you're ready to find the p-value using the normal distribution. Uh, your mean of the distribution is zero, the standard deviation is this thing we just calculated, and then the x-value is your point estimate. So uh, with the left-tailed case, right, then we have the point estimate for x, we have the mean of the sampling distribution is zero, and then we have the standard deviation there. All right, if you happen to have the right tail case, then you have to subtract from one because by default Excel calculates the area to the left. So the right tailed area is always the one that's one. Um, and then the two tailed would just take whichever is the smaller as the tail, in this case, the left tail, and it would multiply by two to get it on both sides. All right, so there it is, uh, 0 0.03078, that's our p-value, uh, and that is less than alpha. The level of significance was 0 0.1, um, and so remember what all this means, right? Basically, allowing this margin of error of 10%, um, we're below that, so 3% chance that the null hypothesis is true and the sample data is correct. That is below our threshold, so that's too unlikely, right? Too small of a chance of that being true. Um, 
and since we trust the sample data, that we're going to reject the null. All right? It's only 3% chance the null is true. That is too small. We're going to reject the null. By rejecting the null, you support the alternative, which is here the claim that the population proportions are different from each other, um, which is summarized here that there is, oh wait, no, here, <laughs> there is sufficient evidence to reject, no, sorry, <laughs> one last time. Uh, the sample data supports the claim that the first population proportion is not equal to the second population proportion. Right, so we are supporting the claim because we're rejecting the null, and the claim is the alternative that they are not equal to each other. So um, we reject the null since p is less than alpha, because that's our p-value, 0.03. Uh, and so the sample data supports the claim that the population proportion from the first population is different than the second. Right, and then we can get a nice graph to kind of visualize what's going on. Um, so the normal distribution graph, you can use uh, this site, davidmlane.com slash hyperstat slash z underscore table dot html. Um, the mean is zero. The standard deviation is 0 0.03355. And we are looking at a two-tailed test. Um, so we'd want to go outside negative 0. 0 0.07245 and positive 0 0.07245. Um, so that number is, of course, the point estimate. And so we put that on the left or the right. Because again, we subtracted one way. If you subtract these the other way, then you would get the positive version of that. And, and either one would go along with that alternative hypothesis, right? If P1 is bigger than P2 or if P1 is smaller than P2. So those are the two tails represent, um, P2 being bigger, P1 being bigger. Um, you can see the calculated area does match up with our p-value if you round to four decimal places. And you can now grab this and include it with your results, which I like to do. It's a little too big. So make it a little smaller. There we go. All right, and we have answered that problem completely. There we go.